Gregor was kind enough to volunteer to put together this uh, roundup uh, of news. The idea here is really just to have a uh, discussion with the group. Um, you know, he's going to kind of present a bunch of news items here, and, and uh, I think for this to be the most valuable is to get people's input, feedback, uh, experience with different changes or opinions about what's going on in uh, the mobile world. Um, so I'll introduce uh, Matthew. So he's been uh, running bookstores for about 14 years now. He's a uh, manager over at uh, Barnes & Noble. And in his spare time, enjoys developing the Java at .NET. Um, and he's going to talk to today about some uh, mobile groups. So I'll turn it over to Matthew. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. So yeah, as Jeff just said, I mean, I think the um, best thing is if we can get a discussion going on some of these news items. I think the news is important. I mean, I'm a, I'm a tech lover, <laughs> so I follow this stuff, right? But I'm also a business person, and I understand that uh, you know we're all having to make these strategic decisions, and uh, it's coming up really fast now. <laughs> it seems like every time I flip on my computer, uh, another uh, posting something, something hitting the wire uh, regarding mobile, and so uh, again today we'll go through um, some of these news items and. Uh, I don't claim to be an expert on any of them. <laughs> so if you've heard something I haven't, I'd love to know about it. Now one of the things, uh, one of the first things that I, that I took a look at was just last time, how many of you were here last, uh, last month? Okay, about half of them. Uh, one of the things that came up in the discussion was, uh, was Blackberry, you know? And uh, what, what happened to Blackberry? Um, you don't hear about it the way you hear about iOS, you hear about Android. You haven't been hearing about BlackBerry in the news as much. Uh, so one of the first things I pulled up were actually the, um, the, some of the uh, popular ratings worldwide for the mobile OSs. And we'll take a look at a slide in a minute. Uh, but I think it's really interesting. It shows, uh, shows some, some, uh, some trends. I was a little bit surprised by it just based on the um, just based on the amount of, you hear, you know, Android ads constantly, you see uh, uh, iPhone and iPad ads constantly. Um, but taking a look at this, so Symbian is still right at the top of that list. And uh, iPhone, you can see, is the green one. The green one. And you can actually see it's kind of taken a, a, a little bit of a, a dip down, right? And down at the bottom here, the, the kind of reddish one that you see climbing, that's Android. That wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> you know, from the, from the media and everything, I was kind of expecting Android to be uh, quite a bit higher. And this, again, this is, uh, this is worldwide statistics. But uh, uh, pretty interesting. And the green line here, um, kind of third one down, that's actually research in motion. So that's our Blackberry. Uh, still a, a major player and, and climbing worldwide. What do you guys think of this? Yeah. So I apologize, but the second one down is uh, iPhone. I can't really see color that well. So yeah, yeah, it's okay. iPhone. So iPhone's the one going. It might be a laser pointer on it, too. Sure. Yeah, there see might be a laser pointer on it. Oh, is it? Hey, hey check it out. We got that one right there. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that's iPhone. I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, I'm not sure that that holds true to, you know, in the U.S. necessarily, but I do wonder if maybe that's got something to do with uh, the rise in Android. Those two are going head to head, right? Is this devices or OSs? This is OSs. So the first question would be is how do you develop for the Symbian OS? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, does anybody know? T-85. <laughs> I mean, it's like, Symbian, I suppose you're just talking about a mass number of devices and yeah. not all of them are smartphones, I guess. But yeah, well, exactly. I mean, one of, the, one of the slides coming up shows, you know, Java ME2 or whatever that is, uh, it's 2 billion installed, you know, but it's not smartphones, right? It's rather than uh, Java on all these phones, but it's not what we think of, you know, you think of like an iPhone or something like that. Still, huge installed base. I guess it's interesting that BlackBerry is the same rate as Android, essentially, if I'm looking at that correctly. <coughs> I couldn't, uh, I couldn't believe it. 
because you just don't, you know, it's just, you don't hear about it. You don't see it in the news the same way. Although well, Blackberry, uh, there's a slide, you know, coming up, uh, Blackberry's coming out with, uh, with the tablet. They've obviously um, got a really strong hold on the business market. So, uh, you know, it's a good platform to develop for. Now you're a Blackberry Java developer. Do you develop for Blackberry? Or? Okay. Okay. I'm just wondering if anybody used the torch. Anybody? We had one at the office and we developed an app for it. A programmer that worked on it isn't here right now, but we we had done some with the torch. All right. IBM did a survey. Um, they basically surveyed developers, and uh, what they found out is um, everybody agrees mobile is where it's at. It is uh, going to surpass all other computing <coughs> platforms expected by 20. 63% of developers said they are kind of um, don't feel as confident in the mobile space as they do uh, in, in developing for other platforms. That's why we're here. Today. <laughs> um, and the, the quote was, "We know mobile is important. Developers might not have the right skills to go about developing for the iPad, iPhone, and Android." Um, so, Apple obviously has been leading the charge in mobile. Here's how they're doing right now. Uh, they announced over 300,000 apps in the App Store, which is huge. 1,000 new apps per day. Uh, 206,000 apps that cost something, and 94,000 are free. Um, and their stock price hit an all-time high, $318 in the middle of October. Uh, the iPad is now the most quickly adopted non-phone electronic device ever. Faster adopted adoption rates than the DVD player. <laughs> and uh, selling 4.5 million units per quarter. What do you think? Did you drop the price? Yeah, I dropped the price, yeah. <laughs> Some competition might not be bad. Is anybody else doing anything with iPads out there? I'm sorry. Is anybody else developing an iPad type device? Yes. Yeah, yeah. What else is? Samsung is doing that. Samsung is doing an Android tablet. Galaxy. The Galaxy Pen tab, yeah. So it's the library equivalent of the same one. Although, the black pen, the digital phone, the black pen, the library uh, I think it's called the playbook. 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 That's right. That's what it is. There. Um, I mean, I, I included some devices uh, that we can look at, but I mean, honestly, I mean, once you start surfing for uh, for tablets coming out, it's insane. I mean, everybody is developing tablet or tablets. You think there's um, going to be a problem where there's just going to be too many, too many platforms, and there's going to have to be a universal, you know, web apps. You know, or a web interface for these. Like, I can't imagine that long term, or maybe they're going to keep them all separate so they have to develop an app and develop an app for three different devices or X number of devices. I personally think that could be a big a big obstacle, but we're kind of in the shakeup period right now, right? Um, uh, Apple's been, been dominating. Android is on the rise, but uh, in five years, I think this marketplace is going to look really different. We've got a lot of new platforms coming that may be really strong. I mean, we don't know. I, uh, Windows Phone 7 is launching now. How's that going to do? I don't know. HP's announced uh, uh, WebOS 2 and their Palm 2 devices. They bought Palm earlier in the year. Uh, how's that going to do? I, I don't know. I don't think anybody does, but I think for a while, we're going to tons of platforms, and that might mean tons of opportunity, but it means a lot of risk too, right? You develop an app, you might be going after a, a platform that's not as, uh, doesn't have the installed base, but it doesn't have the number of applications. I mean, you're going up against 300,000 in the app store. How do you get your app noticed? That's tough. But if you look right now, uh, Windows Phone 7, they're, uh, I can't remember what they call it, but basically their marketplace, there are a few thousand, you know, it's nothing like this, but give it a few months. <laughs> but if you get it now, depending on how that platform does, that might be a real opportunity. So I don't know. It's like the well. I thought it was interesting that Zuckerberg they were commenting on why there's no Facebook app for the iPad. Yeah. He said that it's 
not a mobile device from the standpoint of like an iPhone or etc. But that was interesting. That is really interesting. I think it's annoying. <laughs>
that takes me to the next section, layer up. Uh, Android is, is coming under some fire. Uh, lots and lots and lots of lawsuits going on in mobile space right now. Um, the big one versus Android is, uh, is Google and uh, Oracle. Okay, Oracle is suing Google over some patents. Oracle bought Sun earlier this year, picked up their patents for Java. Google built Android, and they created what's called the Del Delvic Executable Environment, right? It's Java, essentially, but it's a clean room implementation of Java. And they use Project Harmony for the libraries. And uh, it turns out Oracle has some patents on some of this stuff that uh, Google may not have respected. In addition to that, uh, Oracle is refusing to uh, grant the necessary licenses for Project Harmony. Um, and from everything I've read, this may be an actual serious threat to Android. Um, what are they planning to do? I have no idea. Do they just want lights, licensing? And so they're going to they're gonna get some money you know, out of this? Or does this point to uh, what I was talking about before? They've had Java and Mini out there, and it's been extremely successful on mobile devices. Um, but maybe there's a way of turning, uh, you know, they, they may have their own plans in the mobile space and they're interested in protecting their IP. So what do you guys think? So Android, huge player. It's coming under fire. Um, you're a developer. I think this has a little bit to do also with Apple dropping support for Java. Um, when they first started doing this, it was all owned by Sun, and Sun pretty much gave it away for free, didn't really uh, enforce their patents. Now that Oracle has it, they're really getting strict about it. So uh, I don't think it's as fun to deal with as it used to be. Yeah, yeah I think uh, Sun is always a little bit, I don't know. They had the patents. I don't think they had the wherewithal to go after the patents, but I don't think they would have even if they, they did. Work was different. Larry Ellison? <laughs> We're probably going to see a lot of lawsuits. I just don't see Google laying down, obviously, for Oracle in any sense of imagination. As far as being a threat to, like, oh, maybe we shouldn't develop an Android to be gone in here. I mean, personally, I don't think that will happen. It's hard to imagine. Although, you know, I mean, what they're, what they're asking for right now is they're basically saying um, that Google needs to uh, recall all of the Android that they put out there with the, you know, the violation of patent. And of course, that's legal blustering, right? That's, I can't imagine that happening. But it is possible that Google may have to start paying quite a bit uh, to <coughs> Oracle for these patents, unless they mount a successful legal defense. And they did ask. In October, they asked the court to find patents in Mellon. So we'll see where that we'll see where, where that goes. But it's right also, now, it's also politics. Yeah. I mean, you file a lawsuit like this and get it into the papers and listen to your stock drops. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's all tactics, right? Yeah. I mean, in any lawsuit I've read, hardly anybody ever wins. So why would you do it in the first place unless you didn't have ulterior motives? Distraction factor, yeah. you know, if you want to slow someone down in the marketplace for whatever strategic reason, you know, throw a bunch of lawyers at it and, you know, you get things get it out. The media. Yeah. There's probably going to be a ton of cash that changes hands over this. That probably means two things for Google. One is obviously they're, not, they're going to have to take money away from R&D to pay off some of what they you know, basically got at this point. Um, the second part of it is, is that they're probably already working on a replacement for Java at this moment because they just can't live with that liability being that tight to someone else's IP. So again, that's building stuff that they didn't have to build before. So it'll probably slow them down a bit, but we're talking about such huge numbers here and so much money. Um, you know, so I don't think it threatens the existence of, uh, of Android or but then you, you can look for Oracle to become more player in the next few years. Well, I think so, yeah. So, yeah, I can't imagine. I, everybody's not going anywhere. I can't imagine that. Well, then, aren't, isn't HTC being sued by Apple or something or some patent infringements of the Android OS because Google isn't thinking people paid for licenses? 
instances for it, so they don't have to Google, they don't have to replace them. Sure, yeah, and the lawsuit, the chain of lawsuits is, is really convoluted right now. With Microsoft is actually, I, last year, I think, Microsoft sued HTC over Android patents, and HTC just folded. And, you know, I never heard the end of this, but it turns out they just folded. They're now paying Microsoft for every copy of Android they install on their phones. <laughs> Which, I mean, you talk about where's the money coming from this whole deal. It's, it's cost, Android's free, but is it really free? It's costing Google now a ton of lawyer fees and possibly licensing uh, payouts. So um, it gets interesting, like, where's the money, where's the money trail? Well, it's like, it's like Patrick said, you know, maybe, maybe this is a tactic for Oracle to get in the marketplace. Maybe, who knows, two months from now we see Oracle release something that we've never seen before. Yeah. It might become a major player. Uh, you figure they, they acquired Sun, and Sun had an operating system. Yeah. They had a, a, a vicious hardware division. You know. If you want to look into this piece right here, I'd go back and see what Oracle's done in the last three years. Piece it all together, and I bet you can see a trend of where they're going. Yeah. It's interesting. What well, I find most interesting is you're picking on Google. I mean, oh. <laughs> it's like a fight. You don't want to fight. And oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, it was weird too because Oracle, Oracle and Google, the biggest users in Java, right, out there, the biggest users of Java, <laughs> going into the end. Microsoft announced uh, suing Motorola over nine patent violations for Android phones. Patents include synchronizing email, calendars and contacts, scheduling meetings, and notifying applications of changes in signal strength and battery power. Time for watching Windows Phone 7. Um, that's pretty much what, uh, what a smartphone does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to make a call. That's right. That's right. It's going to be interesting. Uh, more patent wars. So last year, Nokia sued Apple. Apple's going back at Nokia now in, in British court this time over the same set of issues. So um, Motorola's suing Apple. Apple's suing Motorola. Gamalto, which makes a chipset, uh, is suing Android and Apple and Malta are now in partnership. So again, you kind of see how bad lines are drawing, like Apple and, uh, uh, and Android and yeah. lots and lots of lawsuits going on with Android right now. I kind of think that's going to be costing Google and partners a ton of things. And this is the uh, this is the, the diagram <laughs> of who's who's doing who in this whole mess. And this is from the New York Times. I mean, does it turn out then it's just a wash? I mean, <laughs> Apple's saying they defend themselves and see people, and Google's doing the same thing. I think most of these things settle for those reasons, because, you know, it's my patents against your patents, right? So we'll find out uh, some middle ground in there. It's interesting, it's like Nokia is the most. Yeah, they, and there's a lot of arrows pointing out for them. It's not surprising though because again we've got a lot of software companies getting into hardware, so the yeah. hardware people are all going away from that. That's yeah. We were here 12 years before you even thought of a phone, yeah. and you just you're going to you're going to step on the patents no matter what you do. Yeah. But you remember that? Remember this was years and years ago. <laughs> uh, one year during the Super Bowl, uh, Microsoft showed this like it was like a tabletop. You could do your pictures and the service. So that, yeah, so that thing, turns out they got a lot of patents on that. Now those same gestures are what everybody's using for their, for their phones, so that's where a lot of these patents are coming into play. It's really, I mean, it's just, it's fascinating. So, as I said, Android's free, but what about the lawyers? Um, how does this impact open source? Uh, I, think, uh, I think it's interesting because Java is open source um, in that case, right? But obviously there are patents that are involved in that, not so open in that case. Uh, Android's open source, but again, they're getting a great suit off of them right now. Um, so I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I heard an interesting conversation on I think it was this week in Google maybe about yeah, Android's open source, but it's really not open source until they release the next code revision. So there aren't people adding into the base code until it's released and then you can get it and screw it on with themselves. Yeah. It's a really closed, uh, the people who have commit access to Android is really a group. Um, and so it's a really closed system, but, uh, but after, you're right, yeah, 
after they've done the release and they open it, they play with it. Uh, but the development cycle is a little bit um, I don't know what's actually going to change because of the lawsuits. Maybe not the, I mean, from the developer angle, maybe nothing comes out of this. Uh, maybe, maybe there are some big changes. We may not see it. Um, some of the smaller players, this may be a deciding factor depending on how, you know, how vicious this gets. So, and uh, the patent system is obviously involved. Everybody has patents against everybody else. So um, it's at some point, you have to kind of wonder, what's, <laughs> what's going on there? Um, is are they really protecting intellectual property at this point? Or uh, I mean, really, in the case of this article lawsuit, um, clearly they acquired Sun and they acquired these patents. And they say, OK, we're going to get some money off these patents or something strategic based on that. Um, is that patent sort of system working at its best? And they hold those for what, 20 years? Is that right? I don't know. All right, moving on to platform and devices. There's tons and tons of stuff going on. We've got uh, some, some, first off, some kind of frameworks and applications. Uh, I thought this was interesting. I just chose a handful that illustrates something that's going on. Uh, Skyfire app was for the app store, so the deal with this is no flash on the app phone. Flash, but uh, this will translate flash to HTML5 on the fly in the cloud. I don't know how it does this, and uh, and so you can watch videos. But it doesn't support games right now. It doesn't support Hulu, which is a big, big minus. It's been available for Android, and it's been very popular on the Android platform. But I think this is a great example of um, some developers seeing a need. They actually hired a bunch of people who were really unhappy that, uh, that uh, Apple wasn't supporting Flash and found a, a way around it, and they're going to be selling this app, and I'm sure they're going to be selling a ton of it. So. I have the news on that. Yeah, tell me. It's, it's, it's gone. It's no way. Yeah, it last, I think, two days. What they do, basically, is they host the Flash on a virtual browser and virtual machine, and yeah. you connect that to proxy. So you're not actually running Flash on your machine. You're just getting screenshots of you know, flash running up remotely. Yeah. But their server, for, they didn't have the infrastructure to handle it. The, the demand was so high that they had to pull the plug because the user experience was so poor. Okay. So they'll be back. They are approved. It's just that they didn't have to acquire a lot more hardware to pull it off. Is a VM running every single? Yeah. Every, so when you connect, you, you have your own essentially VM. For That's that efficient. Flash. Yeah. I know. It's just huge. So they, they just, you know, when they hit the App Store and Flash, it's just Slam. But it'll be back. It's just for right now, it's lights out when they're interesting. That's great. Uh, yeah, I thought, this, I thought this was interesting too. Obviously, uh, approval for the App Store has been tricky for, for uh, applications. And here's one that, uh, despite kind of obviously working against some of the stated goals of uh, Apple, they, they, they did approve it. And now, you know, maybe yeah, it's, it's showing a real they both Skyfire pulled them. Yeah, they almost must have had to. Um, How the hell is Skyfire making money on They said they they're, 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 they're selling the app, but I mean, in the long run, for the bandwidth costs. Uh, <laughs> I was curious how they're, going, how they're planning to make money. I mean, I, it'd be interesting. I mean, it's hard for me to believe they sold that.
sort of tricky to get these apps in the App Store, but they've officially done a technical review of this technology and have decided they will start making decisions not on whether it uses PhoneGap or not, but on the merits of the application itself. So that's probably a really positive thing. Now, there was a question kind of earlier brought up about too many platforms, and I think this is one of the ways to answer that question is stuff like titanium and uh, you know the uh, uh, phone gap and other technologies that allow you to do, do most of your code in one thing and uh, compile for the different platforms. And if you're trying to write apps for all these platforms, it's going to be really, really hard. Um, so that, I think that's really good. Yeah. I use Titanium. Yeah. Check it out. For the very reason you spoke of uh, cross platform capabilities. Yeah. I've done a little bit of Titanium. What do you think of it? Well, you know, I invested some time checking it out, and then they came up with an up, came up with an update, which basically blew away everything I knew about their API, so I'm going to start over again. And then they came up with a pricing structure, which for just an individual developer comes to about 200 bucks a month. So I just thought uh, I did too. Yeah, it was a buy a lot of objective C books with two hundred bucks. <laughs> so anyway, on the pricing structures, I mean, I mean, one thing for me is you know, I haven't really played with any of them. Now it's like now you're getting fragmentation of these things. Like you got titanium, you got this thing. You can do some Ruby stuff. I think on iPhone, it's just like okay. Now we have so many things that we can go cross platform with. It starts getting. Well, this thing only works on containing, or this thing only works on phone gap. Yeah. It's nice that they came together and said, okay, we're all going to make one big cross platform thing that you know, executes HTML and JavaScript. Well, it may be that the marketplace can shake that out. You know, if, if Titanium is, is doing great and you know, they're, they're growing in popularity, you can maybe just buy, they, they would come with one or, or it's phone gap yeah, or it's something else. Or maybe it goes the way of like Java web web frameworks where there are like 500 of them now. You know, uh, you just there's too much. Um, it's hard to know, uh, but uh, it's definitely. I mean, you've got to make some choices. We were talking about this before the meeting. Just as a developer, there's too much to learn. There's too much to know, and you've got to make some strategic choices, which is uh, why I'm so interested in the news. <laughs> try to find out what those should be. I think you're going to see what we saw in Windows and Apple. It's going to I think you're going to see just a couple of players 10 years from now. Yeah. Because you know, it, it, it's going to be dictated by the market. It's going to be dictated by the end users, right? So the end users are going to be so fed up with, well, do I get a Blackberry? Do I get an iPhone? Do I get an Android? Do I get one of this phone? That it's just two guys are going to take over, and that's probably what's going to end up happening. Or maybe, if we're lucky, they'll find some cross-platform. It's going to be the same thing with a personal computer, truly. Really. Could be. And it could be a player that we haven't even seen yet. That's right. It may not be Android and iOS in 10 years. So, but it could also be, I mean, when you think about mobile a little bit, right? Because basically, you've got, your, you've got your app store on there, and you do everything through your phone. So it's not, it's not the same. It's compatibility held for the developer side. But for the user side, they may not care if it's got the same apps in it each store. Or they may not even know. I mean, uh, hey, I didn't know what I was missing. <laughs> um, so it's possible that we may see continued fragmentation with lots and lots of players that you have 10% of the market. And you know, no monopoly on that. That's what I wonder about the most is that a lot of this stuff that's going on right now and what we're talking about is so invisible to the consumer side. And so, you know. Facebook on your phone is just like Facebook on your phone. It's like Windows 7, it's kind of built in, there's no app, and Windows 7 phone, and the different pla I mean, I just don't think, that's where I start to wonder, and I'm trying to think through in my head how the market forces actually work in this scenario. Is it like boycotting, you know, writing apps for phones, you know, and when mobile's exploding so much right now? So it's like, I think it's a while, and it's real bumpy, and it's, you know, uh, just a lot of volatility being a developer in the mobile market. It's a lot of I mean, the reason I agree with that is because, you know, let's just say you take the, the framework and go, okay, developers are going to take the lead on where things go. It's like, I don't want to develop for iPhone? Okay, there's 10 other guys that will. You know what I mean? There's no, like, 
conglomeration of, okay, we're just all going to boycott everything else and do Developer it. union? Yeah, it's like, I don't want to do it, okay, we will. And then if you don't want to do that, the next guy over there, he'll do it for when it's small. It's like, everybody's willing to take a stab at it. Yeah, that's true. But if you're a, if you're a um, big company, <coughs> you're going to need developers for Android, iOS, you know, WebOS. You don't want to miss any of these platforms, right? We just want to And my, my own company is a good example of that. We've gotten into the mobile space in the last two years, and we've got uh, e-reader apps on everything you can dream of now. And, uh, you know, we've had, to, we've had to find developers who can do all that. So it might be good for <laughs> well special. So Adobe Air, does anyone develop on Air here? Yeah. I don't know anything about it really, so um, you, know, it's you guys fill us in. New update. 2.5. Yeah. 2.5. Yeah. Uh, it's been obviously cross-platform, uh, but adding some mobile devices, including Android, Blackberry, and iOS, tablet OS. It's in the article. I don't know what that is. Um, <clears throat> supports uh, some, some new stuff for just to get, you know, in one sprint, an app out in the marketplace, and, and uh, it's great for that, because, like I said, it's HTML, and JavaScript, and you can do more advanced stuff with it, but what developers already know that, you know, so. The other thing is, I would actually mention that the tools are very good, like, for example, you think for how young it is, it really has actually great, like, memory profiling tools and stuff like that, which actually surprised me, I will say that. That the tools are relatively mature versus what I expect. What I expect going into <coughs> learning essentially. But, uh, and also one Necessarily 
into the like the phone as gadget kind of market because they're showing these people like obsessed in their phones. Uh, this is the phone that put you on your phone. So uh, maybe for people who haven't already bought an iPhone and uh, are scared to get into smartphones or something like that. What's interesting about that is is you know those feature phone users whether they can actually afford a smartphone with a hundred dollar data plan in yeah. order to support the phone. So it's like, I think a lot of people are questioning Microsoft's <coughs> strategy there on uh, whether or not they can make that work. Obviously with, with the right carrier relationships, they could probably make it work, but it seems odd. You know, really I think it was like This Week in Tech or um, another podcast where they're breaking down that commercial where it's like, Get you out of your, you know, it's like, what were they thinking? You know, yeah. it's like, so. Yeah, maybe it's, a, maybe it's the business market. Maybe all they're going after is the commercial business market and not the personal users. Blackberry like users? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, basically what Blackberry did. Yeah. Maybe they're learning less from the kid. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's a Facebook, I believe there's a Facebook app where you can actually get a permission to your Facebook profile. And it'll play data from that on a simulated phone, so you can at least get an idea of how it works. Yes. One thing I've heard is, yeah, it looks kind of stupid, but once you see your information on it, it's very immersive. Yeah, and it's like emotionally engaging. Well, the, the you know, it, like they're trying to expand beyond the idea of this one small screen to being more of like there's this field of vision behind there that you can kind of just scroll around through. And it, it's actually I mean, when you watch the videos, I haven't seen one of these. The videos, they, they, it looks pretty cool. Um, so, developing for Windows Phone 7, it's uh, Silver Light, basically. Silver Light. If you're a Silver Light developer, Windows Phone 7 is going to be a piece of cake for you. Um, it, they are really, really uh, trying to avoid anything native. Okay, so everything is going to run on a VM, and they pretty much are saying you can do everything in .NET Compact Framework, right? Um, they've got uh, Visual Studio, they've also released the Express Edition, that's the free edition, so people can download and start playing with it. Uh, I did, I uh, downloaded it, um, I got it to, you know, give me my nice little map from Bing and put a, put a pin in it, and that's all the further I got, but, um, you know, a couple, of, a couple of rough spots, just the phone doesn't support the, any of the um, geolocation stuff yet in the, in the emulator. So you have to mock all that stuff out. But otherwise, it's a pretty good development experience. C Sharp, the only language right now. Um, if, if you're interested in Windows Phone 7, interested in developing for that, there's a application certification requirements, which you just, you got to download that and read it first. Basically, that's telling you the nitty gritty of what they will accept in the store and what they won't. Um, and if, I think they've done a really good job spelling that out ahead of time. So there's no, they're really trying to avoid the sort of gray areas of phone gap and some things aren't accepted and some things are. Uh, that's been happening with, with Apple. So we're trying to get past that. Um, Windows Marketplace, you have to sign up for a developer's account. It's $99 a year. With that, you can post five free apps. Okay, an unlimited number of paid apps. So clearly they're trying to sort of limit, give the incentive to developers to post apps to charge for rather than to have a flood of free ones. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? I think the fact that it uses Visual Studio is just, I mean, light years ahead of, I mean, you saw the demo today. Yeah. You know, I've been through different presentations on, on 7, you know, working with Xcode, it's like Visual Studio is like 10 years ahead of Apple in that standpoint. That's which I think is huge. Very true. But <laughs> they need to have devices in the market. Yeah, from a well. silver perspective, I mean, even if you don't know silver, like, silver really isn't that bad as far as, of course, the code behind it's all C sharp, so easy, right? And XAML, like, Syntax or solar is really not that bad, even if you don't know WPF. Even if you only know ASP.NET, it's like, it kind of makes sense when you look at it. I mean, it's not this big leap in technology, which is very, 
you know, I really like that. It really makes me interested. And the other thing is, I have a question for some. If anybody here is actually developed, is you know, it has integration with Xbox Live, which I'm maybe different than everybody else, but really interests me because I have to found one like iPhone or Android app that does anything with Xbox Live decently, which tells me is Microsoft doing something special to house that, keep that close to their heart? Or does anybody know like? Can you spoof what they're doing over the internet to get this Xbox Live integration on? So you can kind of use that on another phone, or is that? I, I just want to know how that works essentially, because I think it's really cool, but I want to be able to do it on Android or. As far as I know, with the Xbox Live stuff on this phone, normal developers can't use live features in their games. They have to be kind of published. You know if it has like, just for simple things, like I want to sign up my Xbox Live profile just on my phone to yep. monitor my friends or what games they're playing. Does that, that's all that we realize. I believe messaging is Okay. So what interests me there is like, they obviously have to do that over HTTP or something, but maybe it's proprietary and I don't know how they're doing that, but it's really interesting. They have that basically it is their own thing, I understand that, but it's a monopoly over that interaction. Yeah. And I'd love to build this simple Xbox Live app on my Android. I don't know one that exists. Maybe I haven't looked. Well, isn't it while. Sony supposed to be making the next portable PlayStation kind of Android based? Something? Interesting. So I was want to know like, who's playing? I don't want to sign on my Xbox Live. On the internet, you know, on the web, or go turn on my Xbox. It's like I don't look at my phone. Okay, but they're playing all the rooms out there. Yeah. So what Xbox 360 wallpaper apps? Right. <laughs> Doesn't do much good. The thing that I find most compelling about this is, I mean, really, this is a total unknown. We really don't know. But to Jeff's point, it's got the you know the developer tools are robust and they are well known. Lots and lots of people do .NET. Certainly, if you use it with like Unity .NET, this is not hard to pick up. It's a lot less than picking up um, object, Objective C or, or or something else, like uh, some other API. And uh, and it's brand new. You know, we're how many years into three, three and a half years into that iPhone, right? And there are three hundred thousand apps in there. And this is brand new. So from a developer perspective, I don't know how it's going to take off. Hopefully, um, if you develop an app for it, hopefully it takes off game busting. But if it does. You know, this is the time, right? <laughs> um, so I mentioned this earlier, Palm, HP bought Palm earlier this year. Uh, Palm Tree 2's uh, been announced. WebOS 2.0 is uh, in the operating system on there. This is another case where uh, it's using the Mojo framework, and then it's, uh, again, based on HTML and CSS and standard web kind of technology. So if you're a web developer, you can develop uh, stuff for um, WebOS. Um, HP Slate. We're getting into some of the uh, some of the tablets now. Uh, it's it's available now. It's targeted at business apparently. It is quite expensive and it's running Windows 7. So here's uh, this is a tablet. Um, most of the tablets that are coming out are like Android, um, but this looks to be a full fledged essentially laptop replacement, um, but in the tablet. Very interesting, we'll see. You know, I don't think anybody knows what tablets are going to be really successful. Galaxy, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, this is an Android tablet. Um, it is, uh, well, actually, I read online this is starting to land now. There's some Verizon shops that, uh, that got it yesterday. Um, Sprint is um, going to be selling it with a contract for 400 Verizon will be selling it without a contract for 599, seven inch, one gigahertz processor, and uh, it's got a camera. Um, it does support all the things that you would expect to flash. So, so, so. Um, this is really the first major foray into the uh, Android tablet. 
world will see, I think that a lot of people are talking about it, see how it does compare to, to the iPad? Actually, have a question. Yeah, really know this, but you know, there's a distinction in the App Store, Apple App Store today for iPad, iPhone, you know, for resolutions and different features on the iPad. Something similar for this? Does anybody know, or is it you just put it out there and like put in your comments, hey, don't download this if you don't have a tablet? I guess I don't care too much. I just no, this is that distinction on the ice. Anybody think about it? We'll see. Okay, so this is a little bit of a, a change. Um, so there was a news article about some of the first games are getting the Kindle um, store. So they've had a SDK actually, Amazon's had an SDK that's called a KDK, uh, Kindle Development Kit, for um, their e-readers Kindle for about, um, it's been about nine months now. It's Java kind of based API. And um, you know, you, you're working with an e-ink screen there, so you got some limits as to what you can do. But, um, but there's some games starting to, to, to be available. Um, they're estimating, you know, nobody knows how many of these Amazon's actually sold, but they're estimating about two million um, install base and literally a handful of apps. So Again, that might be an opportunity. It's the same kind of 70 30 uh, split. There are some data restrictions if your app is downloading a lot of stuff, but otherwise, uh, that might be an opportunity. And also, we, uh, Barnes and Noble, I work for Barnes and Noble, so I have to kind of let y'all know. Okay. <laughs> um, we announced Note Color. Uh, this is an Android tablet, um, it's primarily an e reader. Uh, but it is, uh, it's got an 800 megahertz uh, uh, ARM processor in it, and uh, it's going to play video and, and do kind of a lot more than our e ink nook does. But the exciting thing here is we also announced um, our SDK, the Nook Developer SDK, which will be available in a couple of weeks, and you can start developing apps for Nook Color and possibly Nook. I'm not 100% not clear on that, um, although I'll know by next time. <laughs> um, but this is again saying, okay, it'll be more towards e-readers, uh, reader type apps, but um, anything that's an Android app now should be easily ported to, uh, to the Nook. This is kind of interesting because mobile, when I think mobile, I think first sort of smartphone and then I think tablet. And there's sort of this other category coming up of other devices that, you know, it's not really a true tablet like the, the Galaxy, um, but it's going to run apps. And the same thing with the Kindle. Running apps, so I think there are other opportunities out there in the mobile space. Well, will they allow the Kindle? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's running basically. We have our e, uh, our e-reader app, and no, basically no for Android, but, and that's what this runs. So um, it's actually uh, go to the e-reader; it'll be the same application. Uh, BlackBerry Playbook. 7-inch tablet, same size as the Galaxy. Um, as we were talking earlier, BlackBerry made strong in business and government. And uh, specifically, there was a lot of talk about how the security related to BlackBerry is, is particularly good. And that's uh, slated to ship next year. But uh, this one will be running. Uh, won't be running yet. And last but not least, the rumors continue to be out there about Chrome OS, uh, Google's sort of web-based, uh, cloud-based, I guess, operating system. And um, uh, there's, been, there's been numerous rumors of this tablet that's being developed and possibly a network talk. They're talking about these things might shift in November, but these rumors have been out there before and they've never turned out you know, to be anything. I don't know if Chrome OS is actually ready to ship on these devices, but uh, it's possible those, those rumors are there. There's lots of rumblings about that right now, so maybe we'll see something uh, new. Well, for sure. It's interesting because what apps are they going to they have all this in house apps and they do release it? Or, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously they're, you know, they're, uh, they're doing all the Android stuff, so it would be interesting to ship a you know, tablet with the Chrome OS and you're also.
Good things.